Turkey has been a critical partner for the NATO alliance and for the broader international coalition opposing Putin's war in Ukraine. Yes, President Erdogan does while have a dialogue. While supporting Russia at the same time, no? I think supporting Russia is, is not the term I would use. Turkey has a vital uh, relationship with Russia. It's a relationship that has generated both good and bad uh, for Turkey in the past. We welcome, welcome the dialogue that President Erdogan has with President Putin when the subject is stabilization, when the subject is the ability to access grain and other products uh, through the Black Sea uh, from Ukraine, that has been extremely useful and extremely important. And we do not see this as a pivot or an alignment uh, of some kind with Russia. We see it as the conduct of necessary relations with a very important, for good or ill, neighbor of Turkey. What does this mean for the Gulf states as well? Would an Erdogan win be positive for Riyadh and Abu Dhabi and beyond? Well, I leave it to the governments of those countries to describe their own reaction to a win or other outcome for President Erdogan. But I will note that there has been an exceptional uh, move by Turkey, by President Erdogan, over the course of the last year and a half and more uh, towards improving relations uh, with the Emirates, with Saudi Arabia, uh, with Egypt, uh, as well as with the state of Israel. And I think that recognizes, on the behalf of President Erdogan, the importance those countries play, economically and politically, and from the standpoint of security, uh, on behalf of Turkey's own broader interests in the region. And we welcome those steps. I also wanted to tap into your experience broadly across the region and ask you about the United States' role in this part of the world moving forward. We know the Gulf states have embraced Beijing economically and politically as well. We've just seen China broker this deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran, an historic rapprochement here. What do you think that means for the future of American influence in this part of the world? And is it being eroded by America's adversaries like China? My assessment is there is a great deal of breathlessness um, in the description of China's President Xi's personal role, both in this region and, and also outside. Uh, we understand the reasoning behind uh, the Saudi, I wouldn't call it rapprochement, but understandings reached with Iran. It's de-risking. It's de-risking the threat from an aggressive Iranian regime uh, to the Saudi investment climate, financial climate, and of course to the hydrocarbon infrastructure. Uh, perfectly understandable. Uh, we, that is the U.S. government, have, and I think appropriately so, have welcomed any measures which contribute to greater stability in this critical region. And I think that comment embraces a wise perspective on all of these developments. Does the U.S. need to be involved? Of course it does. Can the U.S. pivot away from the Middle East towards some other region? The answer is such pivots have usually proven failed. Uh, they have done more damage than help. The U.S. needs to be engaged here as it has historically been engaged in pursuit of its own interests as well as the interests of its partners and friends.